Uh, this is a lady that we're going to be uh, showing you. We're going to talk to her in a second. Um, she basically survived something that most of us cannot imagine. While working in Iran, she was detained, she was thrown in jail, she was convicted of spying for the United States, a charge that she completely denies. And she was released last May after an appeals court suspended her eight-year sentence. Well, now she's published her story in a new book called Between Two Worlds, My Life and Captivity in Iran. I had a chance to sit down with Roxana and talk to her about what happened that day, January 31st of last year, when she was arrested. So that day, they took me to an unmarked building somewhere in Tehran, and they interrogated me for several hours. And um, it was a wide range of questions, but the, it seemed like their focus was on a book that I was writing about Iranian society. And they kept saying, why did you interview these people or those people? Like, why did you interview reformists? I said, well, I also interviewed conservatives. And they basically said, yeah, you shouldn't have done that either. And it seemed like everything that I had done, especially in relation to my book, they were sensitive about. And they said, um, who has copies? And I said, well, my mother does. I emailed her copies. Does anybody else have copies? No. Um, uh, who's paying you to write this book? And I said, nobody. I'm paying it out of my own pocket. And they say, no, no. We know somebody's paying you to write it. And then in the end, I found out they were, um, that day, that they wanted me to say that the book was a cover for espionage for the United States, which is not true at all. Um, later on, I found out that they knew I wasn't a spy, but they were pretending to think so. Why do you think that they wanted to accuse you mm -hmm. of espionage, mm -hmm. even though you say they knew that you were not spying right. for right. America? They do this to a lot of people, uh, political prisoners and prisoners of conscience who were arrested for peacefully standing up for their rights. I think that they also wanted to get this false confession out of me, which they claimed was not false in the beginning. Um, because they also wanted to use it as, as blackmail against me because they wanted me to spy for them. They said this is one of the conditions for my release. What made you decide to confess in the first place? The pressure, psychological and mental pressure, um, was immense. Not only was I cut off from the world and I wasn't allowed to have an attorney, um, <clears throat> and I wasn't allowed to tell anyone my whereabouts, and they had thrown me in solitary confinement, and they said you're not getting out until you cooperate and confess to being a spy, um, even though that wasn't true. And then they started threatening um, also my family. They said, we have agents in different parts of the world. We can also find your family. And they told me also I could stay in prison for 10 or 20 years until I became an old lady. Can you imagine what you'll look like when you're an old lady? And you know, also, espionage can result in a death penalty. So under all these pressures, I thought, well, this is the way things work in Iran. Well, what did you think was going to happen to you? Did you think there was a chance you were going to be killed? Uh, yes, in the beginning, definitely. Um, especially when I was cut off from the world and nobody knew I was there, and my captors made sure of that. How torturous was this for your family as well? I mean, your parents, knowing that they were helpless to get you out of there. I think um, it must have been very difficult. Uh, they tried not to show it when they came to see me in prison because they knew that I wanted to see them happy. But one day my mom cried a lot. And, uh, <laughs> I think my parents were uh, pillars of strength and patience and courage. And without them, it's very likely that I would still be in prison today. An amazing story uh, how she eventually was able to be released uh, because of enormous international pressure and some of the stories that weren't really true uh, about what they were claiming about her. And coming up in the next hour of American Morning, we're going to talk to her more about that. She talks about what's happened since she was released and whether or not she thinks there's going to be any real change inside of Iran. We're going to hear more from Roxana Saberi coming up. It's 44 minutes past the hour.